So, watching the world burn, watching the world burn, June 26, 2023. Wanted to do a follow up on the massive Russian psyop from yesterday. Uh, let's, uh, let's just start the video off because I want to start with the continuation of what I was arguing about yesterday. This is Jason Hinkle. Uh, I tell you what, I watch him all the time. And I sent him a copy of the video, and I swear, I think he watched the video and he borrowed from it. And that's fine. You know, I borrow stuff from him all the time. And you know what? I always give credit where credit is due, and I'm glad that he kept my name out of it because I'm just a little fish and I like it that way. A coup. It was not a civil war. I felt as though my coverage over the past 48 hours and my video that I did yesterday Confirm that. Okay, so drop a like on this video, subscribe, and share this video because this next part of the story I want to share with you I think is actually really interesting and uh, a good question that should be asked. Now, when I did my video yesterday, I said I think there was a less than 1% chance that this was some sort of an op. I think, and I still do think, that it is most likely that this was a legitimate action by... Well, he has to say that because he knows that I called him and every other commentator out on the internet and told him this was a psyop by Russia. But let's just listen to a few more words of his. I don't want to borrow too much of his material. And then we'll get into how I'm being confirmed. What do you know? Got a little bit too big for his britches and he wanted to challenge, you know, Shoigu and Grasimov. And that's what this all was. It was not a coup, but it was a strong arm on the MOD. <clears throat> in an effort to prevent Wagner from becoming completely dissolved into the Russian MOD structure, okay? But here's a few questions and ideas that I think we should be looking at right now to analyze the legitimacy of these actions and whether or not this was some sort of an op, okay? So for starters, and I'm gonna put this tweet up on the screen, I put together four big points that kind of make me, make me look at this and say like, was this all, real or is this some sort of a fake number one wagner has now been re all right so if you followed my video from yesterday these are all the things that i pointed out for the most part although he does add to it and so if he's gonna borrow maybe he didn't but he might probably might be borrowing from somebody else or you know what i found out when i wrote my book on uh, cybersecurity. And I sent it out to try to get people to bring me in, talk to me, give reviews. And what they did, they just stole all my material. And uh, unless you got lots of money and you can go out and, and try to prove that they just stole everything, um, nothing you can do. And, and so unless you have massive amounts of money for marketing uh, your cybersecurity business or if you're just a small business, you can't fight these people. I, there's so many people out there that just steal your material, and I'm not accusing him uh, because he points out some things that I didn't know. Um, so he might have been getting it from other sources than what I sent him. Hell, I don't even know if my tweets are getting anywhere. Every time I log into Twitter, it says, uh, you've had a login from an undisclosed account. I guess that's uh, Elon Musk's way of saying that I need to subscribe and pay the money each month to Twitter, and I'm just... I'm just a little fish. I don't really care about that. So the, I'll just kind of read to you. I'm borrowing from his material. This is I always give credit where credit's due. Uh, definitely check him out. He's on Rumble. Uh, I would say check him out on Rumble much more so than um, on YouTube. But uh, he says the, the, the first thing, he says, Wagner has been restationed 100 kilometers from Kiev in Belarus. I told you that yesterday, which is that's uh, about 62 miles. And uh, your American idiot... Uh, non-metric non system, which we need to convert over to uh, the metric system. Why in the hell we're still using the British system is beyond me. Um, the second thing, I'm just going to go through these real quick, is Rogozin was planning something 48 hours in advance that Putin knew about. And so how he knows that Putin knew about it, I, I didn't know that. So that was interesting that he, he pointed that out. And I told you that Putin knew about it. Otherwise, they would have just destroyed Wagner uh, as they were coming down to... And by the way, the name of the city is Rostov Vondon. And somebody, uh, they came at me on that. And I just want to read a, a tweet to you. Let me pull this up. Uh, I thought this was, I mean, a comment. 
This is a very interesting comment. And uh, I, I believe every word of this. And uh, sometimes you get comments from uh, amazing people. I just hope they don't get in trouble uh, for commenting on my channel because eventually I'm going to jail, I'm sure. Uh, it says, at first he tried to distinguish himself and show how his group is good at fighting and achieved some suggest, success. Of course, he's talking about Prigozhin and Wagner. And remember, Wagner performed very well in Syria. Um, my God, they they fought everywhere. I mean, they, 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 the things they've accomplished, and that's why I told you yesterday is is a fighting force. You know, you have um, you have camaraderie uh, for for um, uh, gosh dang it, I'll get to his name in a minute. Before the Russian minister of war ministry to to force these soldiers into uh, Russian military contracts, uh, I imagine that pissed them all off. You know. They, these are a very tight-knit bunch of people. It's kind of like the uh, French Foreign Legion, okay? And, uh, you know, they're used to fighting together. They don't want to become part of the Russian military. They, they've they got their comrades, and they're afraid that, you know, who knows what the Russian ministry is going to do to them if they sign these contracts. So I, that was something I pointed out yesterday. Then he realized that with such success, he would lose his entire group and began to publicly complain about this and show shogus Shog, i'm sorry i can't pronounce these damn russian names shogus incompetence in order to withdraw his group from the combat zone shogu tried to prevent this and then even ordered uh well and i, I don't know if this is true he said to order russian soldiers to mine the escape routes so that the uh, wagner couldn't withdraw so uh Prigozhny captured a detachment of the miners, which put him in direct confrontation with Shoigu. So if this is true, I mean, I, I why would, I mean, it's, it, it, like I said, I have no way of verifying a comment like this, but it's a very good source, and uh, they're putting it out publicly. And, uh, well, there's so much crap in the universe. Who knows? You, you know, I, I don't, I like to think this individual, maybe he's from, from Russia. You never know. I mean, uh, Hopefully he won't get in trouble. So let's get back to the story. So Shogu banned to ensure, let's see, direct com again, Shogu began to ensure that the entire group of mercenaries went under his direct subordination by signing a contract with the Ministry of Defense. That's verified by a gazillion sources. So this person actually seems to know exactly what was going on. I mean, and, and so what I'm telling you is that if I was a Wagner uh, private soldier or a French legionnaire, no way I want to come under the Ministry of Defense, especially when I've got loyalty to Bergosian. All right, so let's just keep going here. And uh, I thought this is just an amazing comment. So he wanted to take his business away. Well, Shogu wanted to take his business away from Bergosian. Which, you know what, I mean, in the world, you think, well, I mean, there are some nasty people in this world. And uh, we're going to get into the fate of uh, Shogu, Shogu, God, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, here in a minute. Naturally, Prigozhin refused uh, to obey, led his group to Donetsk, and began to wait for Shogu's actions. When he learned that he had sent, now this is, this is, this would explain exactly what happened, and this is why I think this comment is astounding. When he learned that he had sent special forces to Rostov to eliminate Prigozhin, Prigozhin staged the, uh, the missile attack. Of course, you know, and then I've had people say in comments that the missile attack was real. Well, I guess if Prigozhin staged it, <laughs> it was real, right? He staged the missile attack went to Rostov and at first captured all of the airfield. Uh, and well, we know that Shogu, Shogu was, and also uh, Gash, Gashtamov, or the other uh, ministry commander, they were both located there. Now, I guess uh, they had advance warning that Prigozhin and the Wagner forces were coming there to arrest them. Uh, so they fled. I mean, they, they, if you want to... 
if you want to imagine their precarious position, they uh, they fled there and they, they flew out and went to another place. But I guess, you know, when they seized the airfield, it was too late. Uh, they had already gone. So, and then of course, you know, everything just kind of went downhill from there for, for Bergosian because he couldn't capture these two. Sounds like bad people to me, but anyway. So Shogu ran away and Bergosian went to look for him and didn't catch him. Although he had to reach Moscow where he ensured that his group was left alone. So that's kind of the whole comment. So I thought that explains everything. Thank you for that comment, whoever you are. I hope you don't get in trouble. Sounds like uh, everything that, that I was commenting on yesterday as far as the video went. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I guess that's uh, <clears throat> Gorazmov. So right now, my understanding is within Russia, uh, Russia, Shorgi, Shor Shorgi, or maybe that's the way you pronounce it, Sh Sh Shorge, Shorgi, and in Gorazmov, uh, they look like they're on the outskirts. So maybe Prigozhin had a lot of, um, of basis for what was going on here and, uh, and revealed to Putin uh, that he needed a little change up in the uh, war of ministry in Russia. So this whole thing uh, took on a whole new uh, enlightenment to me. So let's get back to uh, what um, uh, Jason was saying so um, let's see. So then he said he, in his video, and I didn't know about this, the uh, that Prigozhin and meet Putin had a meeting on or about uh, June nineteenth. So that would be interesting if 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 um, Prigozhin was planning a, uh, a defection from from uh, or a coup on Putin or even. Uh, anything that why would he meet with uh, Putin on or about June 19th and I don't know where he got that information I'm just reporting on what he said I don't want to pretend that I've got sources that, that told me that he said that so Putin we did well and of course as a result of all of this and this is why I told you it was a psyop and and Jason agrees with it although he wants he doesn't want to admit he was wrong he was wrong every commentator on this whole thing was wrong and that Prigozhin and Putin were in cahoots, which is what I told you from the very beginning, that Putin weeded out all his disloyal figures uh, from, from everything that was around him that came out uh, with their Western allies to try to uh, overthrow Russia. So then the, the, uh, the last thing that he pointed out, and I didn't point this out yesterday, that was negot well, actually I did point this out yesterday, but I want to point it out again, okay? The negotiation with between Lushinka and Prigozhin, it well, I didn't know when it started. I just knew that they had a negotiation, but it started one hour after the Ukrainians started their offensive push. And if you've watched the battle today, um, many, uh, at least another thousand or two thousand Ukrainians have lost their lives. So let's just get to a um, couple other things. Uh, I was watching Redacted today and uh, they gave out a new ticker symbol. It's a salt mine here in the United States. R-E-M-R-F. R-E-M-R-F. I threw five. I, I bought 500 shares. Uh, it's at 82 cents a share right now. Um, you can watch uh, Redacted on YouTube. I'm not going to rain on their parade. I, I think it looks like a good purchase. Uh, I always like listening to that channel. They haven't led me astray yet. Uh, although, you know, I don't know. And, and did I do my homework? No, I did not. You need to do your due diligence, but sometimes I just, I only have so much time and I just, and you know, you're only talking a couple hundred bucks. So. Um, let's see, sell note. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't know what's going on. I, I have a credit card. I was supposed to be getting uh, cash back on my cell phone bills. And, uh, and I'm not getting any cash back, so I'm going to be looking into that. So you might want to, if you think you're getting cash back, make sure you look into that. Ah, uh, the garden. You know, I've been grump putting grow a garden, grow a garden, grow a garden. My damn zucchini plant and uh, squash plant have perished. Uh, the tomato plants, well, because I didn't stake them out properly or build a proper chalice, um, they're, they're pretty much dying so I'll be uh, making some videos about gardening uh, here soon. Uh, you know, silver right now is on a, 
uh, really a good low. It's up 42 cents last I looked, but uh, some people are predicting it might go down even further. Good time to buy. Good time to buy silver. Um, you know, I, I can't stress this enough. I think that you need to make any home improvements that you want to make right now. Um, it's taken me a year. They still haven't finished my windows. I bought windows from Renewal by Anderson, a reputable company. Uh, I'm calling them out. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, they can't say anything. They haven't finished the window project. It's been almost a year. So if you want to do anything, like put in a hot water heater, buy a new washer or dryer, you know, spend the money. Spend the money, spend the money, and get it done now. I, I don't think things are going to get good here in the next uh, few months. Um, well, I talked about how I published the book and everybody stole all my material and then used it as their own. So, um, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, so we might have a, that, that big news contact. I have a big news contact that uh, may want to talk to me, and they want to do it through Signal. But, you know, I call myself that cybersecurity guy. Signal is not a secure app. Uh, NSA and the government have broken it, and in fact, uh, there's been a code injected into that app that allows them to spy on people. But, 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 it's a hell of a lot better than using a regular cell phone. So it does tell me that they're trying to keep me anonymous, which is good, because uh, you know I'm just a little fish. And so I don't want to talk to a big news outlet through a uh, normal cell phone channel, which you shouldn't do, or email for that matter, because uh, I don't, you know, well, I, I, I get myself out there in public way too much as it is. So uh, so I appreciate the fact that they want to talk through signals. So we'll see where that goes. Maybe you'll see me on, uh, I won't say what the show is. Uh, we never know. So that's it. That's it for this video. It's good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSantis.